Hey, welcome everyone uh, to our webinar on trail advocacy. Uh, so my name is Maggie Mullen. Uh, I'm from the Active Transportation Alliance, and uh, this is uh, I am the uh, advocacy manager focused on suburban advocacy, and we have a program called Bike Walk Every Town, where we try to support advocates in the suburbs. Um, who are interested in improving walking, biking, and transit access. So trails are a very popular topic in the suburbs, so we wanted to uh, focus a, a webinar uh, all on trails and hear from our trail advocacy manager at Active Trans, as well as some advocates, um, Ginger, Ginger and Libby, from uh, who are in DuPage County and their work advocating for a trail uh, in their communities. So just in case you're not familiar, probably most of you are, uh, the Active Transportation Alliance, we're a nonprofit, and our mission is to advocate for walking, biking, and public transit in the Chicagoland region. And if you do have any questions at any time, uh, you can either use, if you're using the, uh, the Skype uh, webinar and you can see the presentation, you can find that little comment icon and type a type a question. You can also, if you do want to unmute yourself, mute or unmute yourself, you can press star six and ask a question. And at the very end, we'll also have a chance for Q and A if anyone has any uh, thing they want to bring up. So our speakers today, uh, we've got Matt Gomez, our trail advocacy manager at Active Trans. We have Ginger Wheeler from Glen Ellen and Libby Ahern from Lombard. And we'll first be hearing from Matt. He'll be talking about the Chicagoland Trail Connect campaign and the latest of what's going on with that. And then we'll hear from Ginger and Libby, uh, who are uh, advocating for the East Branch DuPage River Trail. And they've had some successes recently. So, uh, And then we'll end with just mentioning uh, a bill we have uh, in Springfield where we're trying to get funding for biking and walking, which would include trail projects. So I'm going to turn it over to Matt now. Thanks, Maggie. Um, Wait, Maggie Matt, I can't hear you. You're still muted. You're like, muted maybe on your computer, on the computer? Oh, I think I can unmute you. Okay, there you go. Ah, no. How about that? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Maggie. So as Maggie mentioned, my name is Matt Gomez. I'm a trail advocacy manager here at Active Trans, um, and I am working on the Trail Connect Chicagoland campaign. Um, we launched this effort about a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, as a way to assess and evaluate the regional trail network um, from an advocacy perspective and how we can get advocates involved with um, improving the system and eliminating gaps that exist in the regional trail network. So one of the things you'll see here as we're moving through the PowerPoint um, are some slides that show the system as it currently exists and what we are proposing. Um, this is by no means comprehensive. This just shows that uh, the purpose of this um, map is just to show that there are a lot of gaps in the network and that if connected um, can provide uh, users with a much more um, enjoyable experience. Um, where you see now this map shows a much more comprehensive and complete system of trails um, for walking and biking uh, throughout the metropolitan region. When we were first looking at uh, the campaign and determining the principles of how we were going to uh, organize this effort, this advocacy effort, uh, we came up with three sort of overriding principles that are overarching principles. Um, the, the first one being to make sure that the network is low stress, that 
anybody from um, an expert bicyclist to um, a family with small children who are just learning to um, to bicycle or um, uh, or you know want to go for a walk through the woods um, can have a, a very pleasant experience, uh, and that means that those folks can can get to trails more easily without them being without the route they are have, having to go through an automobile. Um, a lot of currently a lot of trailheads um, or access points for trails require users to in order to get there to drive over to the trail and that is what we've experienced is detrimental to getting people out on trails um, if you've got a few kids it, it can be difficult to load up everyone's bike in the back of a car and try to drive a couple miles over to the trail um, to get onto it versus if there is a network of low stress streets where people can walk and bike over to trails it provides a much more user-friendly experience to getting to these um, community assets uh, one of the other things we the other principles of our work was to make sure that the the trail network was seamlessly connected so that means for users who want to um, go from one trail to another regional trails often uh, that the experience is is enjoyable that it doesn't require you to have to stop and figure out where you are and how to get over to another trail that it's well signed and that as you're biking or running or walking along the trails you know how to get from one major regional trail to another and that they are seamlessly connected and then finally the other major principle behind our effort was uh, equitability and that was from a perspective of the trail system is um, at its ideal um, would connect communities throughout the metropolitan region and not just exclusively for communities that have the resources to develop trails but also for communities that are under um, resource and underrepresented and can benefit the most from having access to uh, recreation so with those principles in mind we came up with some advocacy strategies to target our work um, we wanted to first look at areas where uh, we thought we could make the most impact by doing direct advocacy um, so we focused on four priority areas which will which I'll discuss in a minute um, in addition to that we wanted to build a regional trail coalition which would assess the current state of the network and how to make improvements to that from both um, a technical aspect and an advocacy aspect uh, in addition to that we wanted to do some mobilization of our members and supporters to advocate for trails throughout the region and get their elected officials involved and supportive of these efforts so as you can see in this map uh, these are the four areas that we um, are focused on initially and later in my presentation I'll kind of go one by one through each of these and why um, these are important segments and gaps in the regional trail network uh, that we thought our direct advocacy efforts would be um, paramount to making improvements um, in the in the in the gaps that exist around these segments of trails um, the goals of our campaign uh, we, we kind of thought of in terms of what we could get accomplished shortly and then what we could try to do over the next five to ten years so initially we identified 43 miles of targeted trail gaps those are the four areas um, that we showed in the previous image um, 
we want to get a commitment from governmental stakeholders to prioritize these areas and get started on ensuring that the connections in these areas are made. And the two areas where we've been doing the most direct advocacy work ongoing even prior to this campaign launching um, were along the Displains River Trail and in the Lake Calumet area. So we wanted to make sure that construction was starting on projects over there. We also want to make sure that we have a network of, of hundreds of advocates that are well-educated and well-resourced so that they can advocate for eliminating trail gaps in and around their communities throughout the seven counties. Long-term, we want to obviously complete the remainder of the targeted areas and then identify other trail gap network um, parts of the region where we can focus some direct advocacy. Uh, and try to eliminate the roughly 145 remaining miles of trail gaps in addition to getting sustained funding for gaps around the region. So we started, um, last summer we had both uh, a summit, we had about 50 folks from around the region who, uh, advocates including uh, both of the upcoming presenters, um, come and give a little bit of background about the projects that they would like to work on in their communities and learn about how they can go about um, improving their uh, improving the gaps near them and, and and what types of tools they could have at their disposal. In addition to that, we also released our vision plan, which you can find on our website um, at activetrans.org. Um, this lays out a lot of what you see in this presentation, but also in a little bit more detail. One of those, uh, um, one of those case studies that I was mentioning um, is the Des Plaines River Trail. That was an area where funding was available for a phase one engineering study. And for folks who are familiar with the Des Plaines River Trail, it runs from roughly the Wisconsin border down to North Avenue um, in central Cook County. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to piggyback off this work that was being done by the engineering team and the Forest Preserve District of Cook County um, form an intergovernmental coalition made up of Cook County commissioners, uh, local elected officials, mayors and aldermen, um, their planning and engineering staff, and then gov other government agency representatives uh, to tackle from a technical and um, political perspective how to improve the trail. And then in addition to that, we launched last summer a Friends Of group um, to kind of study this in from a community perspective and understand what is most important for them. Um, and then I'll talk in a little bit about the, the corridor plan that those two entities um, helped to create. So one of the important um, things to note about the Des Plaines River Trail is that the northern part of it especially in Lake County and Northern Cook County, um, is well used. It's heavily um, uh, enjoyed by people from around the region. Uh, but once you get to about Tui Avenue and you're getting closer to the city of Chicago and some of the inner ring suburbs that are a little more densely populated, the, the trail becomes a little bit more challenging to use on a consistent basis. There are connectivity issues where if you're going uh, along the trail, you'll run into a large arterial street like Irving Park Road or Fullerton, um, which make connecting across those large streets very difficult. Um, there are currently some tunnels that usually go underneath those arterial streets, but those are often flooded. And they're flooded because the trail runs pretty close to the um, river, and the river, the Des Plaines River, if anyone has ever uh, even driven near it, uh, very frequently floods. Um, and in addition to those two issues, 
folks in the surrounding communities often don't know that they have such a great uh, amenity in their backyard. Um, and so getting them to the trail is something that we are going to be working on heavily in addition to when once they're on the trail, um, them understanding where it can go and where it can lead and providing more information for them, including wayfinding signage. So to gather some more information, we sent out a survey to um, all of our members and supporters near the Displains River Trail and had the Forest Preserve District of Cook County and the Metropolitan Planning Council uh, put a survey on their website to promote um, folks to take it and, and give us some feedback on what they like and what they would like to see improved for the trail. And we, we got some pretty important data that was able to um, help us push forward uh, what is the what the community views as the most important challenges and what they think uh, they would like to see done. And from there we we took that we took other data, including crash data, and looked at where folks were entering onto the trail to see if there was a correlation between where accidents were happening and where people were jumping on the trail and there was a direct correlation and so we wanted to use those entry points as a um, as a way to prioritize um, particular trailheads and segments of trail for improvement so moving forward we're gonna um, with these two groups that we founded the intergovernmental coalition and the uh, friends of group we're going to look at how we can make the trail more seamless, how we can improve access to the trail, what types of economic development opportunities and funding opportunities are available for communities adjacent to the trail, and how can we engage with those communities and those elected officials and get them to support this um, effort. So that's sort of uh, one of the major ways we've uh, prioritized uh, tackling this project, um, in addition to the obvious ongoing uh, engineering work. So with that sort of model in mind, we're also looking at other areas in the region, uh, in addition to the Des Plaines River Trail, including the northern extension of the i &M Trail, which the i &M Canal Trail starts um, further downstate near the Starved Rock area and is a very um, enjoyable trail to use as you go from very rural communities um, in the middle of Illinois up to the um, kind of outskirts of the metropolitan region and all the way to the city limits. Currently though, the trail abruptly ends uh, in the village of Willow Springs. Um, and so there is a, there's some engineering studying uh, being done as to how to extend that from Willow Springs to the Portage Historical Site. The Portage Historical Site is a ideal node, transportation node for uh, bicyclists and pedestrians to be able to connect to other trails on the, in the area. Um, they could go north to the Salt Creek Trail, they could go east to the um, eventual uh, Chicago South Branch River Trail and the Des Plaines River Trail ideally would can also continue south of North Avenue where it currently terminates down to this node as well. So this would be an opportunity for users throughout the metropolitan region to jump on various trails and uh, it was one of the kind of principles that I was mentioning earlier, the seamless connectivity and move throughout the region more easily. One of the other areas that we were looking at was the northern suburbs, northern Cook County suburbs. Um, this is an area that has a kind of spectrum of communities from uh, kind of very wealthy, heavily resourced communities to um, it, more dense inner ring suburbs that um, have more of a um, light industry feel to them. And so with that in mind, there's a lot of, there are three major, three to four major trails that run north-south through those 
uh, communities. And one thing we wanted to do was figure out how to improve those trails, but also how to connect folks east-west to those different trails. And then finally, in the Lake Calumet area, we have, um, for, for folks that are uh, unfamiliar with the Lake Calumet area, it's a heavily industrialized part of the far south side of Chicago um, and some very uh, and, and entering suburbs that touch on the along the Little Calumet River. Um, so the those communities have for a long time been uh, disenfranchised. They there's the uh, issues with um, access to amenities, community amenities, whether they be grocery stores, um, job opportunities, uh, and the like. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to look at how to improve connectivity for folks in that area through uh, walking and biking. Um, there are a couple existing trails, the Burnham Greenway and the Major Taylor Trail, as well as what it's not shown on this map because it's still under construction, is the Cal Sag Trail. So we thought that this was a perfect opportunity to explore how to connect to these various trails, but also how to connect communities to each other. Because with the heavy industry in that, in that area and with the um, freeways and other uh, obstacles preventing folks from more easily being able to go from community to community, um, we thought that trails were a perfect uh, solution to that. So if you're interested in getting involved in our effort, um, there's a few ways you can do it. You can support the Trail Connect Chicagoland campaign on our website. You can join the Regional Trail Coalition or one of our four target area coalitions. Again, that's the northern suburbs, the Des Plaines River Trail, the northern extension of the i &M Canal Trail, and the Lake Calumet area. And help us, um, in addition to that, you can help us identify gaps in the network as they exist outside of uh, those four priority areas, and then work with your uh, fellow trail advocates to close gaps. And that, I think, is a great opportunity to kind of just move the discussion forward with two of our uh, most successful trail advocates, um, uh, Ginger and Libby, who have been working tirelessly to improve and create um, trails in their communities. If you have any other questions, um, I'm going to put my contact information here for you to uh, reach out to me if you'd like to learn more about our work or would like to discuss uh, trail gaps in and around the region. Thanks so much. All right, thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. So um, we are now going to hear from Ginger and Libby. And I don't know if Libby, Libby, are you there? Yes, uh, I just did. Oh, perfect, perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Ginger's here too, right? Can we hear you? Yep, I'm yeah, right here. Perfect. Um, so yeah, do you two want to um, tell us kind of what you're, what you've been up to with the East Branch DuPage River Trail and how things have been moving along? Sure. Oh, Ginger, why don't you go ahead and start, and then I'll just fill in. Okay. Well, Libby was our speaker last night. <laughs> We've been. Uh, doing a lot of presentations in our community um, as the word about this trail is getting spread around. So we kind of tag team and take turns making these presentations. And um, both are qualified to speak at length. Um, basically, our story is that we met through Active Transportation Alliance we were both interested in seeing this particular trail, the East Branch DuPage River Trail, get built, although it's not part of a Active Trans's major plan that Matt was just talking about. Um, it's a plan that's been in DuPage County for about three decades, and um, some of the trail has been built, but it's not all the way built. There's a lot of missing connections still. Um, in particular, one that's in the region where both Libby and I live. It's about a six-mile stretch in the center part of DuPage County. So when we met, we kind of brainstormed, and I'd been working on it a lot before I met Libby, and um, not really with much success, um, just kind of 
working to try to get someone else to do the advocating and trying to interest my government and, um, officials into actually doing what they said they were going to do 30 years ago. And um, didn't really have a lot of traction. And then I met Libby, and things just took off. Like, having a buddy really made a difference. And we worked really great together, kind of holding each other accountable for things. And then we also recruited a couple of extra people to work with us. And just spreading the work around has been really beneficial because there it is a lot of work, but it's fun work. And the outcome is a new trail. So we're really hopeful that's going to be what happens. Um, the way we did it is we got a petition up. And this was all Libby. She's, she's a millennial, and she knows how to do all this stuff really fast. And she put it up, and we immediately started getting signatures. We got to a few hundred rather quickly. We went. We took that to a forest preserve official who was very interested. Um, then, through another active trans event, it was the Bike Walk Every Town Social that we promoted, and Active Trans was pretty aggressive in helping us promote that. And Maggie came and brought snacks and all kinds of stuff, so that was really nice. And um, we attracted a county board member. So those two guys, the Forest Preserve board member and the county board member, really became our champions on this thing, and they both were instrumental in bringing people to the table that could make things happen. And as a result, um, last fall, and was an election year, and elections were a little dicey in DuPage County last year. There was a lot of upsets from the status quo, but it's prompted our government officials to put some money in the budgets for 2019 to move forward on this project. And um, what we understand is that they budgeted about a hundred and sixty thousand dollars between three government organizations, and they applied together for a CMAP grant with that money, and the hope to double it. They didn't get more money from CMAP, but what they did get was a pledge of support and help from CMAP. And they were only one of about 70, or there was 10 of about 70 organizations that got that pledge of support and help from CMAP. So that was really positive. And, mm -hmm. you know, probably in the future, they're going to have to reapply for the grants. And from the way I understand it, you have to just sort of get in line with these grants. And you don't often get them on the first try, but you might get them on the second or third try. So... That's the story, and that's where we're at with this bike trail. And our mission, Libby's and mine, and our other co-committee uh, members, we don't really have any formal organization yet. We're just kind of random people working on it together. And um, our, our mission is to raise awareness in our community. So we're doing that with this website, which you see in front of you. That um, Libby or um, actually Active Trans gave us a, a nice little grant, which enabled us to pay for and uh, build this website. And also, we built some other materials that we can use to communicate what we're trying to do, um, like big maps. Everybody wants to know where the trail is going. People are really interested in the maps of where it would go. So we've got a couple of those now that we've had printed and laminated so we can do, put them out on display when we talk. And then we're just going around to community groups. We're meeting with groups as small as five or six people to last night we had a presentation to a group of, gosh, I think there's probably 50 people in that room. I don't know, what would mm -hmm. you say? Um, and then we ask them to sign our petition. We ask them to get on our Facebook group. We ask them to tell their friends and neighbors and ask their friends and neighbors to, to sign the petition. And we ask them to tell any other community groups that they're associated with to um, call us and ask us to come and present to their group. So whether it's a church group, a book club, a, you know, something affiliated with the church, a synagogue, whatever, we will come and talk to that group. Um, and if you look, if you want to go, Maggie, on our page to the Our Progress tab, 
that's where I'm kind of keeping track of all the different groups that we've spoken to. The so this is just a PowerPoint, so I I can't. Oh, it's, um, oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were on the real website. Never mind that. Um, but you can see if you go on our website, which is eastbranchtrail.org, and you click on the Our Progress tab, that shows you all the many community groups that we've talked to, not including the one last night, which I haven't put up on the website yet. But um, that's kind of been what, what, our, what we've been doing, our strategy. We keep downloading all the signatures we've been collecting and giving copies of them to our elected officials every quarter or so to remind them that there's community support for this and to remind them not to forget about it again like they did 20 years ago and um, mm -hmm. let them know that we're not going away. So it's sort of a gentle but firm pressure, I guess you could say, that we're putting on them. <laughs> yes. I, I agree with everything. This is Libby. I agree with everything that Ginger said. Um, and with the petition, we're trying to um, send out – so we, we sent out petitions to all the elected officials when we hit about 500 signatures last fall and then um, sent out another round of those, especially getting in any new board members that were elected in November, uh, so that they would be updated on the project and know the, the commitment or the desire from the, their citizens or constituents to get this project done. So the petition is you know, always collecting signatures online through change.org and on paper, um, but just keeping that in the eyes of our elected officials is an important part of it too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the story. Um, do, are there any questions or anything, or what else would we what um, do you think to talk well, about? Next? How how many signatures do you have now from your petition? I think we're, I all, think we're over about seventeen hundred or more. How, Two, how many did you think? Seventeen hundred or more. Yeah, I think right. we're close to the two thousand mark. Yeah, I I've seen on your Facebook how. Um, a lot of people or a lot of groups will just e mail you signatures that they collect on their own, which is amazing yeah. that you're able to get so so much community support and so many other people involved. That that happens mm -hmm. a lot, and it's a bit of a problem because the the ho hard copy signatures are great. We can make copies of them and pass them in, but um, we haven't had time really yet to transpose all yeah. of those hundreds and hundreds of signatures and email addresses into any other usable form where we can reach out to those people, like in an email list or something like that. We just haven't done that yet, although it's every intention is to do it. Great. Because we also have an e-blast that we send out, and um, we're trying to keep people in the loop for, via the e-blast. Because one of the things that frustrated me in the beginning was the county has a web page on the trail because it's a county project, but they never really updated it that much. So it was hard to know how current the information was on there. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, if we have an e-blast and we keep informing everybody who's got an interest in this trail what's happening, that that would be a good way to kind of keep the interest up on it. Yes, definitely. So, and you you guys have also had you've done events. You you have these little pins. You've gotten elected officials wearing them. You're meeting with a lot of important people. So it's you're doing like a lot of many many touches in many different ways. Yeah, many, we try to keep that um, the the pins. I just pretty easy. I just made them on our like it's pretty easy. Nothing fancy. We didn't order buttons or anything. Um, but just it's nice to have a visual and also a leave behind when we meet new people to say, and here's a pin for you. It just kind of hopefully jogs their memory the next time they see it in their purse or briefcase or whatever. Oh yeah, this trail project. Um, as well as giving our pictures and presentations and website, just some branding that's continuous through all of the different ways that we try to gather support. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a funny story about the pin. So Libby had one. She, she makes them by hand. They're really cute. And I think she ha she's a school teacher, and she had her students make them at first, I think, or something <laughs> to get. I did. <laughs> 
And um, I was wearing mine last night after the presentation that we made to a group called the Wild Ones, which is an environmental group. And I went to Trader Joe's to grab some flowers. And the Trader Joe clerk, I don't know if you've ever been to Trader Joe's, but the clerks are pretty uh, outgoing, I would say. Mm -hmm. They're pretty social. And the guy was like, what's that? I heart Ibadar. Who's Ibadar? <laughs> And I was like, well, let me tell you. And it was like announced in the Trader Joe's. Oh. Like the guy was so loud. And oh. I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to go back in there and give them some flyers. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm planning on doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. You you two have been, yeah, you've been really a model for like how to make this happen and how to move projects forward, how to get community support behind it, how to get elected officials involved. It's been amazing watching you, you two uh, along the way. So, um, I mean, we had a little bit of an advantage because this project has been in the works for, like I said, many decades so it's not like it was starting from scratch, you know, mm -hmm. it was more like the thing just kind of went up on a shelf and people kind of forgot about it. So that's, um, that's a fate that we want to try to avoid this time around. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way that can happen is if we just keep up on this steady pressure. Yeah. So that's kind of what we were trying to do. Yeah, so if any of you on the call um, or who listen to this recording um, want to help, there I just switched the, the PowerPoint, so that's their website, eastbranchtrail.org, and you can sign the petition yourself and spread it spread it to everyone you know. Um, and, and if anyone has any questions for Ginger, Libby, or Libby, um, you know, feel free to, you can speak now, you can add a comment um, in the power in the, um, Skype chat, um, but they, you, you, yeah, you too. I'm, I'm always, I love hearing from both of you and how things are, are going and, um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Well, and I have to say Active Transportation Alliance has been great at putting us together, giving us resources, tools, ideas, money, all of mm -hmm. that has been um, put to good use and we're really thankful and thank you for having us speak today too yeah, it was really for sure um all right well i if anyone if anyone is thinking of any questions well at the very end we'll um go back to um if anyone has any questions for ginger libby or matt um we're happy to address any anything that comes up for you. Um, and we just wanted to mention one other thing that we're working on at Active Trans, which is we're working in Springfield right now. We, we have some campaign organizers that we hired. Um, we have some lobbyists in Springfield. And we're trying to get state funding for walking and biking and trail projects. So we have a... Uh, um, a bill um, right now that just went through a hearing committee meeting. It's called the Complete Streets and Trails Local Grant Program, and basically this would fund uh, walking, biking, and trail pro trail projects. And it would take two percent of the Illinois Department of Transportation's budget every year and devote it to those types of projects. And that's about fifty million dollars. Uh, so once we're, we're we're still getting some updates because so this bill was just passed through the the hearing process on Tuesday of this week. Um, so it was what was that March nineteenth? Um, so we're trying to figure out what are the next steps, and this would involve you know taking some action, letting your state senator um, and representatives know that uh, you support this type of program. Um, to fund walking, biking, and trail projects, and of course, you know this, this um, having a budget like this could really help uh, what Ginger and Libby are doing. It could help, help, you know, the entire region and all of the the areas that Matt was mentioning. So, um, when there is some action to take on this bill, um, I will email all of you. Um, so, and help helping spread the word on this would also be very much appreciated. So that is the end of uh, the, the
the formal presentation. So again, if any one of, of you on the phone call right now has any questions, any comments, any um, of your own experiences that you'd like to share, we'd love to hear from you. And if you want, you can unmute yourself. Um, I think you can either do that on your computer or you can press, if you're on the phone, you can press star six. So open it up to anyone. So I think, um, I think maybe we're good. So, um, yeah, thank you all then for Hi, joining. it's oh. Patrick Smith. Um, oh, Barrington. hi, Patrick. Yeah. Um, thanks, all the presenters. Uh, great. I mean, very inspirational. Uh, the the um, trail that Libby um, and Ginger. Sorry, I forget the other person's name. Ginger. Are working on. Thank you. It's. I mean, that's. That's the type of work that if more of us had time, we'd have more of those things going on. So I, it's <laughs> awesome that your success and the inspiration that you guys bring is, is wonderful. I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, Matt, you. one, uh, one comment for you. You got into it. I was going to ask a question about what about East-West connections, because a lot of what you're talking about is North-South stuff. So I'm glad that you mentioned the East-West connections. Those are really important. I know that you know this, Matt, so I'm just one of those quote-unquote constituents saying so. I'm just reiterating stuff that you know. The east-west connection to the Des Plaines River Trail is important because, I mean, the corridor is to draw from so many more communities than just those ones that are immediately adjacent and right on that trail. Um, so thank you for addressing those today and continuing to work on them. I, I very much appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do with the uh, – you know the engineering scopes much much like a lot of these engineering scopes are kind of related just to the project area and um, and while that's very beneficial for the particular trail um, the communities around those trails uh, that's where the folks are living that are accessing the trails whether they're coming from a mile away or ten miles away um, so we want to make sure that those communities have created uh, bike pet plans, complete, have adopted complete streets policies, um, and are moving forward with looking at their pedestrian and bicyclist connectivity to those trails. So you're absolutely right. Whether the trail runs uh, east, west, or north and south, um, folks need to be able to access those trails throughout the region. All right. So... Um, one more call if anyone has any questions or any anything they wanted to share about what's going on in their community. Open it up to you. Um, but yeah, otherwise I think we can we can close out a little early. So thank you, um, Ginger and Libby, for taking the time out of your your day to speak, and Matt as well. Um, so appreciate it, and thanks all, all of you for joining. And uh, we'll get the uh, a link to this recording sent out soon, so you can share with others, and um, as well as a few links that uh, to resources that were mentioned here today. So uh, yeah, thanks everyone, and enjoy your weekend.